What's up guys, back in the kayak. Today we're gonna be targeting halibut, at least for, at first. That's what we're gonna target first here. Oh, I'm loading up on bait here as we speak. Oh wow, I think I got a few of them on here. Maybe too many for this bait jig to handle, I feel like. Oh yeah, we are loading up here. I think this is gonna be, oh yeah. Okay, well, oh, look at that. Okay, I don't know, get in here. Okay, well, a little more than we bargained for there. Look at this guy though. Big, huge mackerel. Look at this. Look at how big that one is. That one I'm gonna take home to cook, but I also caught a few smaller ones that I'm gonna be using for bait. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. I tried to catch squid first thing in the morning. Um, I'm out here with Outdoor Chef Life, who, by the way, donated this hat to me, so shout out to him. Um, he actually got a few squid, or a couple of them at least. Um, he's still out there trying to catch a few more. I wasn't able to, so I came in close to try to catch some bait fish. I got some smelt, um, and now I'm getting on these mackerel. This is a big one right here. This one's gonna go home to the dinner table. But yeah, like I said, we're gonna be trying for halibut today, so it's kind of all over the place right now. I gotta get my things in order and uh, get our lines in here. So as you saw as I was doing that intro, I caught a few really good sized mackerel. I'm gonna take those home for dinner. But I also got a couple of smaller ones like this. And this is gonna go right down as live bait because halibut love mackerel. So I'm gonna get this one down while he's still lively. See if there's any big fish down there waiting. I got a two hook rig here. The one I normally use while live baiting. I'm gonna put it down on a little fish finder type setup. One thing about mackerel is you gotta keep them moving. Anytime they stop moving, that's when oxygen stops going through their gills and that's when they're, um, that's when they die. So, gotta keep this one moving. We're gonna put it down there while he's still fresh. We're right now in 52 feet of water. We're gonna be drifting around here with uh, this mackerel, like I said, and I think I'm gonna put on uh, frozen squid first. Talk good, I got another mackerel right here. set up. It took a lot longer than I was hoping. It's getting interrupted by this mackerel, which actually a lot of people don't like them, but I think they're really good eating and they're really good bait. So I got one of them on here as bait, a couple in the live well, a couple in the ice chest, and then also you can't see over here is a uh, little bit of light tackle setup. My light tackle salmon rod uh, set up with a frozen squid. So we're finally drifting. Did we find some halibut? Um, do you think it could have been a thresher shark? Interesting though. Whatever it is, you should catch it. came back a couple of times. Yeah, that's a good one. It came back like at least twice. Hit it and then let go, 
and then came back again. What do we got here? It looks like, oh yeah, it's a halibut. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. Where's my gas? I'm not sure if he's a keeper, so I'm gonna just lift him in. May or may not lose him, but. Let me go for it. Okay. There he goes. Shoot. I thought that might happen, but you know what? I'd rather lose a borderline fish than gaff a short fish. So I tossed him back. I'll let him live another day. It was right around keeper size. Probably, to be honest, I think it was a keeper. I think it was probably like 22, 20, 24 inches, somewhere in that range. Um, but anyway, at least there's one down there. If it was a bigger one, hell yeah, I'd gaff him. But like I said, borderline fish, it's just not my style to to put a gaff in him and honestly i recommend any of you guys to do the same if if you're out here like i said i'd rather lose a borderline fish um, than gaff one that's too small and i have to let go and the chances of a fish surviving with a gigantic hole in wherever it's at is very very low so anyways like i said good karma we'll let that one go and we'll see Maybe we'll get a bigger one here. That was funny though, that fish, he bit. I uh, I went to pick up the rod, he wasn't there. And then I put it, I dropped it back down to the bottom. I saw another bite like this, still not there. And then the third time he came back, then I set the hook and he was on. So uh, yeah, the fish are a hell of it for sure. They'll, they'll uh, follow a bait for a long time, even peck at it. Maybe they didn't like it or just wanted to get a taste. And then uh, finally, the third time he committed. So, anyways, let's get our line back in, see if we can get a bigger one. Good one. Oh, wow. Good fish, good fish. Oh, yeah. God, what is this? It's coming back to me. It's coming back. Whatever it is, it's coming back. This is a good one. Went on a good run. I gotta get this other line up. Yeah, this is a good one. I think this is the hell of it. Again, on the frozen squid. Doesn't seem like anything's biting my live bait today. Yeah, this is a good one. I'm pretty sure this is a halibut. Went on a good run right at the beginning. Really took a lot of line. And then now, as you can see, it's just kind of dead weight. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see a lot of weight on this rod. It's got a lot of bend. This is a light rod. It's my salmon rod. But I mean, you can tell the difference compared to the first one. This one's got a lot more weight on it. Yeah, there it is. This one for sure is a keeper, so I'm gonna gaff this one. Got him. All right. Not a huge one. Honestly, I thought he was bigger. He took a lot of line right at the beginning, but it's a keeper nonetheless. Boom, all right, keeper on board. Look at that, barely even got him. But we did get him. Gotta watch out. So there you go, there's our first keeper halibut of the day. Well, actually, 
I think it might have been my second, but the first one, like I said earlier, was borderline. I didn't want to gaff shot him. Oh, he's got all kinds of blood on him. But this one, I know for sure this one's a keeper. So let's see, let's see exactly how long it is. Exactly 27. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the first one I got was probably a few inches shorter than this one. I think it was probably like a 24 to 23 incher, but that's okay. No sweat. There's plenty of fish out there. So California halibut, um, technically they are left-eyed flatfish, which means when they're, you know, if you were to put it straight up and down, both eyes are on the left side, which is exactly what this one is. But California halibut, I think the split is like 60% one way and 40% the other way. So there's not really one side that's really, um, uh, dominant over the other. Some other types of halibut, like um, Alaska or sorry, Pacific halibut, you know, the big ones that you catch up in uh, colder water, Alaska, Oregon, Washington have some also. Um, they are right eyed halibut. And I think like 98% or something like that, most of them um, have their eyes on the right side. California halibut, you know, like I said, 60 40 or something like that, um, almost half and half, um, one way to the other way. But this one, this is a left eyed. You can see it's got both eyes on the left side. One, two, and nothing on the other side. It's just a white side. Um, so these fish, they sit on the bottom on the sand. You can see they're super camouflaged. The top is like pristine sand color. Um, and then they come up and ambush their prey. Squid, anchovies, you know, other bait fish, stuff like that. Perfect size for this little soft cooler. Eat him in tail first. All right, you hang out in there, drift around a little more, see if we can get another one. What is this? I think a mackerel picked up my squid on the way down. Strong. It's a big one. Yeah, it is a mackerel. Big mackerel. Wow. Look at this guy. Ah, I can barely even get him in. Oh, that's why there's two of them. Look at that. Two of them hit my smelt. Or sorry, my squid. Big mackerel. Look at how big that one is. Normally around here, this is like a good sized mackerel, but look at that one. It's like an extra you know, two or three inches off of, the, off of this one. That's already a good one. So these are, a lot of people don't like them, but I think these are really good eating. So I'm gonna leave these and throw them in the cooler with this halibut. We'll have a nice little medley. Let me get home. Big mackerel, big mackerel, two big ones. Look at that, huge mackerel. These are Pacific mackerel. Normally, you don't get them this big around here at least. These are actually really good bait, but these are too big. These are huge. Look at that, look at those two mackerel. Those are Huge, huge mackerel. You don't get much bigger. These are Pacific mackerel. Um, here on the west coast, these are the more desired of uh, the types of mackerel in terms of eating. Those are real. These are might be some of the biggest mackerel I think I've ever caught. We're gonna have a nice little uh, buffet of halibut and mackerel here. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. The drive back or the pedal back was brutal. I mean, normally it would probably take us less than an hour to get back. It took us about four hours 
just because the wind was blowing so strong straight in our face. But it was a fun day out there. We got on some really, really good mackerel. I mean, I think those are some of the biggest mackerel I've ever seen or caught. Um, and I got a couple of halibut to go with it. So fun video. I cooked up the mackerel. Really, really good eating. I know a lot of people hate on the mackerel, but um, personally, I really like them. I broiled some. I grilled some and I ate some sashimi, all very good. Um, I didn't film any of it, but if you want to see some mackerel cooking, um, go check out Outdoor Chef Life. He'll be putting together a video from today as well. Um, but thank you guys for watching. I'll have to go film my next adventure and we'll see you next time.